Hi everyone, my name is Jan and um, I make airports for Lamina Research's uh, Flight Simulation Explain 11. And um, I'm going to show you in a series of tutorial videos how to do that. Uh, the background is that many of uh, the airports in Explain uh, looked or used to look like this one does right here. This is a KTTA, Sanford uh, Regional, just uh, south west of Raleigh Durham in North Carolina. I uh, searched for a while until I could find an airport of this size that is still looking like this. This uh, is the way the default airports used to look and explain um, until people came along and improved them to make them look really nice and realistic. And uh, this is what I'm setting out to do with this video tutorial series. It's uh, going to span uh, 17, 18, maybe 20 parts um, making airports is easy, but at the same time, there are many, many facets and little uh, potholes that you could uh, fall into, stumble over as you make your way into uh, the, the world of uh, airport design for explain. It's uh, fun. It can uh, even be a little addicting. Uh, so be warned. And um, this uh, first part is going to be about getting the necessary tools that you need to make airports for explain. And um, I'm specifically uh, targeting this uh, tutorial series at making airports for the scenery gateway, which is the uh, general and uh, central repository for airports that ship with explain they're so oh you would call them default airports they are part of the simulator and they get added once users have completed them and once they uh, were checked out um, they're added to the total airport database and then distributed to everyone so if you make an airport upload it to the scenery gateway it gets checked out and then everyone that uses explain will get your airport in a future update which um, is pretty cool i think and um, of course, there also, uh, there's also the possibility to make airports just for yourself or for uploading them to some uh, uh, website when, uh, where other people can download it and install it into Explain. That's also possible. And uh, watching this uh, video will, or this tutorial series will help you with that as well. But uh, don't forget, we're aiming at specifically at making airports for the scenery gateway, the so-called global airports. Now, Everything I say in this video tutorial series is my opinion. I'm not working for Laminar. I'm not part of Laminar Research. So if I tell you to jump off a bridge then, uh, and you do that, sue me, but don't uh, sue Laminar Research. They will possibly link to this tutorial series because, of course, they hope that you will all jump in and help making airports, improving airports. But um, this is not an official Laminar Research video by any means. And um, we're also aiming at making realistic airports and contemporary airports. Yes, I know the old Kai Tak airport in Hong Kong was really cool, but um, this is not accepted at the gateway anymore simply because it's not there anymore. And I also know it would be totally cool if your local uh, back of the woods airport with a grass runway had really a nice asphalt 10,000 feet runway with approach lights and a terminal and a couple helicopter landing spots. This would be really nice, but if those things are not there in reality, don't do them. They will catch uh, that during the validation process when after you uploaded it and um, all your nice work will be for naught. So you can certainly do that and enjoy those airports for yourself and maybe even have other people uh, download that, but uh, don't try to upload it to the scenery gateway. We're trying to make the world as realistic and contemporary as possible. Don't forget that also some professional users are using Explain, and um, if they fly to your airport, they don't want to see some fantasy of yours. They want to see what the airport would look like in the real world. Now let's get started. Um, as I said, this first video tutorial is about setting up shop. So what do you need to make airports for Explain. Um, of course, you need Explain itself. Uh, we're 
talking X plane 11 here. I will redo this video probably for the next version of X plane. I keep redoing these videos every half year, year as uh, X plane and also the main program that you need to make airports called WED uh, do progress and get into new stages because simply my videos become outdated and uh, this is so-called version 2 point maybe 5 or so. Um, at any rate, we're at explain 11.33 uh, beta 1 and um, this is what you would need to make airports. Of course, you can do it with an older version too, but then you cannot upload them to the scenery gateway. The scenery gateway will only allow the um, limited range of versions to upload stuff simply because uh, they keep adding or taking away certain objects, certain assets, and um, you don't want to um, upload stuff with outdated objects. So I'm going to close the view of this very, very barren airport. Uh, you'll get tired of looking at it anyway during the course of this video. But um, let's start by assuming that you have wet in um, Explain 11 installed and it's running fine. So we can just quit that. Now, the next thing you would do is you would need to get the world editor. We're at version 2.0, release 4. Soon there will be a 2.1 with the um, much looked for facade preview. Uh, Michael, he's one of the chief designers of world editor, which is open source, by the way, um, is working on that right now. So I think in the course of this tutorial video, we'll be looking at that. Now, where would you get wet? You just um, go to the internet. I'm also assuming that you are online. There's a page called the developer.x-plane.com um, and there we have tools and under tools is scenery tools. You can see that here. There's the world editor and um, that's where you click and you land right here. And there you can see the latest stable version. You would download it for your operating system. It's just a simple file. It's no install installer. It uh, doesn't get added to the registry or anything like that. You simply install it. You can put it wherever you want. I choose it. To, uh, I choose to have it right here on my desktop, and that's where you just unpack it. it. Comes in a little zip, and then you're basically done. You can just delete it, and uh, if you don't like it anymore, nothing to uninstall. It's very. Uh, Nice to have it this way. And um, once you're done, you would check that it runs. You double click it. And nowadays, it does take a second to start up because it's looking at a couple of things. And um, the splash screen, so to say, displays what's inside your uh, Xplain 11 custom scenery folder. If I if I open up my Explorer, you can see that I've Xplain 11 here. There's custom scenery, and if I put that next to it, you would see there's Aerosoft Frankfurt, Aerosoft Frankfurt, Paderborn Lipstadt, Paderborn Lipstadt, and so on. Everything that you have in your custom scenery folder in your Xplain 11 folder is shown here. Once you have pointed wet at the correct um, location of your explain installation so for this you would go to file and there you have the change explain system folder then you would browse for the correct folder and uh, point it to the explain root uh, folder so to say don't point it to uh, point it to the custom folder it will find that itself point it to the explain 11 folder and then you should see the contents of your custom scenery folder right here and um the, um, the next thing, we're going to open that later on and, and show you how everything works in here. Um, the, the next thing that you would probably like to uh, set before you even start is the preferences. And you can see uh, right here the length units. You can choose meters or feet. You can uh, choose the coordinates in the info bar um, as degrees and fractions of degrees or degrees, minutes, and seconds and um, also the font size which is nice and then you can save that and that's done and then you're pretty much set up to use wet later on when we get to that um, if you're done with wet you just simply close it uh, you don't need to go file and and exit but of course you can and um, now you have wet you are almost ready to go of course we i talked about the scenery gateway already let's look at that one as well it's then it's an integral part of making 
uh, scenery for X-Plane nowadays. The scenery gateway is under uh, slash slash gateway dot x minus plane dot com. And this is the, the splash screen screen that you get. Um, the home screen, so to say, the most, or you can go through all these tabs here if you want to make scenery. You would probably want to register for it. This works just like any other website. You provo provide an email address so they can contact you in case something is wrong with your with the stuff that you submit. And also, um, if other users sometimes find problems with your airports, and and this uh, it's of course everything is uh, data protected. No one is going to uh, know where you live or anything, but it really helps to be able to interact with Lamina Research and also other users. And um, of course, you have the Search Airport Scenery tab. And let's type in KTTA. That's the airport that we want to work on. And um, you see it comes up with the airport ID, the name, and it's a 2D airport, which means there are no 3D assets like objects or buildings on it yet. So this is why I picked this airport because in the process of showing you how everything works, we can also do something good for the community and get another airport uh, fleshed out and, and looking nice and then upload it. If you look at other airports that are more uh, popular, let's say KJFK, John F. Kennedy, um, and click on that, you can see that uh, there's, the history is, is a, a lot longer. You can, you can see that the, every submission has, a, it has its own scenery ID. It's based on a parent. So see this scenery ID is 62325. It's based on 60508, which was this one by the auth, artist Chris, uh, seven, Chris K73. And the type, the time he, um, did that, uh, submitted it, and the moderator comments and the status if it's approved. You can download the package here, which is not something that you would really want to do. I'll explain to you later, but you could if you wanted. You can see the status, and if you scroll down here, you can see how this airport progressed through the time. It started out as a 2D airport made by WetBot, which, which means a default Lamina Research Airport, and then was improved by these artists over time. And this is the way the, the scenery gateway works. You, you um, don't have to find an airport that no one ever worked on. You can just get this one. It was done in August. Maybe something was changed recently, and you know about it, so you can just basically pick JFK. And then uh, once you pick the uh, JFK, you can uh, work on it and then submit it. And uh, that's the way that the airports keep getting improved and updated over time. Don't feel possessive of your airport. I know sometimes it hurts. You put in like 100 hours and then uh, some other guy, uh, you know, adds a windsock and then his version becomes the recommended, the uh, the vaunted recommended version. You can see that little green check mark here. This is currently the recommended version. And uh, it rarely happens that some guy uploads stuff and then uh, Julian, who's the uh, curator of the scenery gateway, checks it and he says, well, this is not an improvement. This actually is really worse. And then, but it's okay. So he would approve it, uh, but he would not make it the recommended version. Usually the newer versions are the recommended versions because, um, well, you know, idiots are everywhere. But most people here working at the Scenery Gateway, working for the community, are trying their best. And uh, they are rarely making airports worse or unusable. And uh, eventually, Julian will be the judge if that ever happens. OK, now you have the Scenery Gateway. Make a link for it. Register if you want to. If you're serious about that, and uh, then we'll come back to this one later. The next uh, thing that you would want to have if you are getting into scenery design is access to the uh, unofficial place that we all hang out. Uh, got a new personal message here. This is the explain.org. It's again not affiliated with Lamina Research at all. It's a privately owned website, but it's um, one of the biggest websites for explain and you can discuss everything of course but we have our own little subsection here the scenery development forum and uh, it has uh, it's under forums engineering department scenery development forum and then you have further sub forums the scenery gateway wet guides and tutorials and uh, well this one it's not something that you want to worry about right away but um, in the main forum you can ask you can you know look at many many things that are explained to you. you can read through all this stuff you can ask questions if you have trouble and we have um, 
forum called the Wet Guides and Tutorials Forum, where you would uh, find a link to the tutorial series that I'm doing right now. Um, there is Triple Mon. This is Michael I talked about. He's one of the guys that is working on Wet mostly, and he keeps improving it at an astonishing pace. That's why I have to redo my videos uh, at frequent intervals. And um, you can read about the newest editions and even reach him here and discuss how wet is getting developed and uh, if you find problems about it this would be the right forum of course you can also file official bug reports about wet he reads those as well and um, the one of them the most important forums for scenery gateway work is the scenery gateway forums and we uh, have this forum here to uh, really well, mostly you would announce if you start working on an airport. I will do so later on when we start working on KTTA. I will make a little uh, post here saying, hey, I started to work on it. Please, everybody else, uh, leave it alone. We don't want two people working on the same airport at the same time. There's currently one other thing in uh, effect where that precludes that and i will show you that in the next video that is checking your airport out but um, it doesn't really preclude anyone from working on it they get a warning if they try to but if they chose so they can they still can but it's really stupid if two people work on the same airport at the same time and then uh, julian has to choose which uh, airport is the nicer one so we as a courtesy try to announce our projects and we also post some screenshots here and that's uh, it's a great place to hang out and all these people are really friendly there's julian here from lamina research he also reads the stuff and helps out so this is something that you want to bookmark and um, start to frequent when you get into making airports for the scenery gateway um, there's some other things that i would recommend this is getting notepad plus plus maybe or any other text editor because you do want to edit some text files especially when it comes to um, <clears throat> the location of uh, nav aids this is all old school text file base and if you want to get into that this is a, a good program to have notepad it's free and um, it's very convenient has lots of features but uh, it, it also is a little bit better than the default text editor that comes with windows so that's what i recommend um, there's one more website that i like and that is skyvector.com it gives you information about uh, airports uh, right here and i haven't done so but you can check out ktta and let's see what they come up with oh yeah there's lots of data uh, you know the, the runways what uh, surface they have the dimensions the coordinates and everything this is uh, pretty good information you also get some charts here and you can do that of course you also have wikipedia and everything else um, there's many 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 websites that give you information about the airport that you want to do and um, we'll talk about that during the other videos when we get into building this airport a little more now there are some other things that you could use if you are making airports one would be um, extra libraries of objects you'll soon find that when you work with the default objects that lamina research gives us that those are pretty limited we're getting more and more stuff but um, there's only so many variants of hangers that you can use and uh, some people can't handle that they say no i want uh, re i really really want this pink hanger and uh, it's, it's pink in real life and i can't live with it being red i want it pink so they look at other options and one option is uh, downloading extra libraries you can again check out the .org they have a huge download section with stuff and uh, one of the most famous library collections or object collections is the open scenery x collection weighs in at over one gigabyte and if you download and install that then you can use all these objects to make your airport look really really great it will look much better than any gateway airport can but the downside is that lamina research does not allow uploading any airports with extra assets third-party content and um, that's why if you do that you really um, close the door on being able to upload your airport for everyone and um, that's not what this video is about. So I told you, you can do it. It's fine with me, but uh, don't expect to 
uh, upload your airport then and i'm not going to further show you how to to do that uh, you can figure it out i'm sure but i'm not touching on that and um, there are also some other um, assets that you can use you will see that when we start working with wet uh, we need of course to know what the airport looks like you have an airport image right here uh, this is what our airport eventually should look like but um, of course, there's one website, one um, program that comes to mind immediately. That's Google Earth. And of course, you could um, look at the airport in Google Earth. You can even save uh, the view and you can even import that image. It's saved as a JPEG into WED. And uh, you could use that to um, trace your airport, trace the taxiways and everything. But, and here's the big but, this is not allowed. If you really look at the... Um, the rights that you agree to when you uh, install Google Earth, they expressly forbid to use it to trace or to make any other content. And that's why Lamina Research cannot allow any uh, airports done with that uh, into their servers. And that's why I'm not going to show you how to do it. Um, there's no really, not really a way of, of, of checking if you did it, but um, that's all I'm going to say about it. It's not allowed. It's uh, not uh, Google does not allow that. And that's why I'm not going to show you how to do it. And it's not recommended. Um, there's one other program which is really nifty. It's called Wet O Maker. It's automatically downloading images from Bing Maps and adds them into your Wet uh, project. Uh, really easy to find Google Wet Omaker and you can see it and um, the advantage of Google Earth and of course Wet Omaker is that the the uh, images so my stupid uh, microphone keeps turning off um, that the uh, image is much clearer much sharper than what we get in default wet uh, but on the downside also the Bing maps are not allowed to be used to make uh, a third party stuff to make content with it you can't uh, make a, your own map with uh, bing or with uh, google earth and you can't make uh, airports i think bing allows you to do that uh, to make airports for your own but um, they wouldn't allow to have these airports uploaded to um, lamina research website so again um, Wet Omaker is, in my opinion, and as I'm not a lawyer, but if, as the way I read it, it's not allowed to use that. And um, that's it for this video. Uh, we installed and or bookmarked the important sites that we need. We have Wet going and set up for using. And um, I told you what this tutorial video is about. So I hope you stay tuned and um, I will see you on the next video.